Okay. So with an exterior, we, you know, want to first like uh, bring in, so I'll just import that human um, into my scene. There's my human. And look how big our human is. Okay, so the human's really big because if we go into the settings, oh, I've closed that part. So I'll have to find it from settings preferences, Windows setting preferences. If we go to settings, we can see our working space is set to centimeters, um, and which is fine if you're doing a small scene. Uh, centimeters is fine, but we can change this to meters. The only problem when we do that is as soon as we get to a certain distance, we lose our uh, area. Okay, and what's happening is the camera is clipping our face our object. So I'll just make some land. So as soon as you go past that distance, it's been clipped. So to change that. We go into our camera attributes. Quick way to get there is just to click on the camera and the cog. And I'll just click on it twice. And here it says far clipping plane. So I can just add a couple of zeros to that and we can see everything. Uh, you'll also notice it's a bit hard to see, but sometimes see how it's gone all uh, flaky and a bit uh, Bit of an issue there. I wonder if I can. I think you can see it there as well. It's probably a bit hard to see, but you'll see that it's um, a bit black. It's it doesn't the renderer doesn't know which side to render, and it's because the near clipping plane is too small, so it's rendering the other side. So if we increase the size of that, we can see that it sort of fixes it, that up as well. So if you are working in meters, then you want to sort of change that around. It's good to work to scale because if you take an object to another scene, um, say you create a library, then everything's to scale. You don't want to be, you know, creating a truck for a, a scene and uh, the director asks you to bring in the truck and you put the truck in the scene and they go, where is it? And it's like two centimeters high and stuff like that. So. Working to scale is always good. All right, so when blocking in a scene, we can really just quickly, say if we were looking at an alleyway scene or something like that, we'd wanna just, you know, quickly just bring in some cubes. I'm just using the shift clone to clone them up. Um, and yeah, we'd wanna sort of like play around with the camera angles and yeah, create some uh, you know, maybe some bins or something like that. And yeah, just cloning those. So we're just putting placeholders in on where things are going to go. Um, and then we might want to play around with uh, the, you know, uh, the backdrop. Okay. So instead of uh, extending this land out forever, what we could do is just take this plane I'm just going to clone that and subdivide it using just the smooth. Might make it a couple of times. And yeah, I could go in, select a point, a vertice, use the uh, soft select, so the B key. Uh, pressing down the B key, clicking and dragging, opens up the brush. And yeah, I can sort of scale these up now. Oh, I've got constraint turned on. I'll make sure that's turned off. And yeah, I can scale these up, make some sort of heels in the background. Um, maybe I want to make heels in the distance as well. So I could take that, come back down to my camera angle can even rotate her around. So yeah, think about it. I, I kind of think about it like, you know, if you were making a Western, right, you don't need to make the, the back of the, um, the back of areas that aren't being seen. So 
in old westerns they used to just make the facade so you can you know get rid of these faces you don't need them there you don't have to get rid of them but um, just try and cheat the angle okay so there we go we've got nice, some nice mountains in the background um, if you want a bit more of an organic feel as well you can let's just do it with this area you can use the sculpt tools so if you click on sculpt and then in here we can then do sculpting um, I'll double click on and I'll turn off invert and so now the strength value is really high on mine by default it's actually set to like so 15 but because we're working in meters that's you know not enough so we have to sort of times it up um, and the B key again changes the size and so yeah that, that can help to make some organic sort of shapes uh, we can use the relax on top of that as well you can even use like stamping All right, invert. You want to, you don't want to go too crazy with this sort of stuff because um, it does sort of wreck the topology a lot, and you want to just keep it as clean as possible. And because we're you know blocking in, we don't need to add that much detail. So the next step is you know working out the camera angles. So um, we can go up to create camera. And create a new camera and so now if I go to panels perspective camera I'm looking through that particular camera so I can scale it uh, or move it to the position I want let's turn on shade it so we can see what's going on but one thing about cameras is that um, let's just go to the other other view and here's my camera that I've just made you can actually scale them so you can see them. Um, is you by default are, hang on, I'll look through selected, which is that one. Or yeah, so this is a nice quick shortcut. You can go look through selected object or you can choose the camera for, through here. So here's my camera. You can play around with the mood of the camera by changing the focal length. So by default, it's all set to uh, 35. If I wanted to make it more dramatic and uh, more perspective, I can then change change that to a smaller focal length and move the camera down to unusual positions and, and so stuff like that. So I might be happy with that camera angle. I could lock that camera off so I can't move it now and I can come in can I can even create a new camera from the perspective window here. And this time, maybe I want to make an iso isometric look. So uh, I'll go extreme, I'll go 500. Okay, and so it's like a zoom lens. So it makes everything uh, come together foreshortened or um, so the back, there's less perspective. And if I go up to a 45 degree angle, I get that sort of nice um, isometric sort of look that you might be going for as well. Um, if you turn on a resolution gate, you can see what the framing is. As well. And that's going to help you to block in your scene and, and work out exactly where things are going and, and that sort of thing. So which makes it easy because then you work out, okay, I actually don't need to uh, put detail in that object that's around the corner. I can get rid of it. Or I need something more interesting in the foreground. Um, so maybe I'll, you know, uh, put something in here like a, a some sort of packaging or, or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, really quickly iterate your ideas and work out exactly how things are looking. Um, in your scene.